Hello there, everybody. I'm Mel Allen, and this is Baseball Collector. Yo, and hello, everybody. Mike here, Baseball Collector, and happy Wednesday night to everybody. It is kind of late, actually. I'm doing shooting this video late at night, and I, and I wasn't really going to do a video today. I wasn't feeling it too much, but I got some stuff in the mail to show, and then I saw a video from Dave, Blue Jacket 66, and it totally inspired me to go, yeah, I'm doing a video. Uh, if you haven't seen it, he did a video tonight or that he posted earlier today, actually about some vintage comics that he has and, uh, talked about great stories of when he was a kid. And I, I resonated a lot with what he was saying because I had the same feelings when I was a kid, he and I are about a half generation apart in age and yet the same themes that he talked about, I felt as a kid when I had comic books. And uh, I'm gonna show some cards today too, cause I did get some, I've gotten some cards, but not a ton. Again, I've been really migrating slash intentionally avoiding the card area, arena, I guess, because I just am unwilling to pay what prices are. And I'm just like, nah. And so I've been really getting into hunting for the comics that I want to get for my Amazing Spider-Man run. Again, the goal would be to get every one of them. There will be a lot of them, especially the single-digit Spider-Man that are Amazing Spider-Man that are going to be impossible. Well, not impossible, just incredibly expensive. And I don't know that I'm going to go down that road. But I'm working my way kind of backwards. Uh, I'm... I only need like 60 something, 65, 66 of the entire Spider-Man run now. I got two more today, sub 100, which for me is kind of a big deal because I grew up in the era when um, probably around the 230s to 300-ish range was kind of the, the area of comic reading that I did and just love Spider-Man. Who doesn't? And so... Huge Marvel guy. I mean, I have every Marvel comic on my wall that was issued in October 1973, which is when I was born. Most of y'all know that story, but that's what all these comics are. And so I just had, I just love Marvel, everything Marvel. And uh, listening to Dave talk about it was just incredibly inspiring and fun to listen to. And I could just listen to him talk about it literally all day. So I have, again, been working on finding comics they're going up in price, no question. Certainly not like the card market is, but there's a lot of movement in the comic world too. And so I'm kind of going, I'm gonna grab these while I can. Similar to the cards, honestly, I have had to settle, let's call it, for lower grades. I'd love to get 9.0s, 9.4s, 9.6s in all of these comics, but the difference between that and a lower grade is so significant in terms of price point that I'm, I'm happy just to have the comic much like I'm very just happy to have the card of a certain card. And so the first one I got here is amazing Spider-Man number 67. Oh, that glare is terrible, but there's number 67. It's CGC graded. I, I love the CGC grades. This is a newer slab. They have several generations of slabs, just like, PSA does. But this one's a 6.5. Uh, it's got a Mysterio cover. You know, this is from, you know, December 1968. So this is definitely one Dave would have had on his dad's floor uh, of the cars. They're going around, driving around the country. But so I picked that one up. And 6.5 is very mid grade for comics. I mean, it's not. But. It's still a nice copy, like no creases, no nothing. And then I got this one as well. This is Amazing Spider-Man number 73. And you've got the, the Marco, Man Mountain Marco. I don't know if that's the first, it is the first appearance of that guy. Not like he's a huge, you know, uh, villain for Spider-Man, but this one's a 7.5, so a little bit better grade than the other one. And, you know, a lot of people say, oh, that's pretty funny. It's got, you know, there are people that will, like, up here, there's a, like, one of those old date stampers on it. 
Uh, yeah, this is from June 1969. But that's funny. It's actually got a, a date stamp of February 1969. Who knows? Uh, but this was a June 1969 issue. So anyway, uh, John Romita cover on this. Uh, John Romita Sr. And I think it's the same on this one, but it'll tell me up here. Yep, John Romita cover on this one too. So, not Steve Ditko covers. Those are earlier, but John Romita, certainly fantastic legend in the comic world. So, love these, just picking these up. And if I can get them graded, great. There's some I've been picking up that aren't graded. I just kind of... I'm just looking for a deal, looking for a, a, a nice version of the comic to put in my collection. So that's the comics. Uh, sorry, that was probably a little long-winded, but I just, I love it. Um, sporting my Bench Clear Media t-shirt tonight, by the way, which you can get on our website, Bench Clear Media, or benchclear.us. But uh, yeah, we've got t-shirts now, go figure. So let me get to some cards. We'll take a look, and I'll show you what I've picked up on the card area, hang on. All right, so I'm probably not gonna use the stand tonight, I've got it there just in case, but uh, this is just a lot of, like, look at this stack. So, all, none of it graded, believe it or not. Nothing that I'm gonna show tonight is in a PSA slab, go figure. And some of it might even surprise you. So I did another deal with uh, JT, Triple Crown 24, and one thing, he had opened a case of Series 1 Tops 2021. So he sent me, I, I got from him a Rangers team set from Series 1. You know, my goal, I think one of the projects I'm going to start working on is doing a team binder for all the Tops years, which is pretty cool for, you know, uh, the Rangers because... It ain't, it's not that long. They only started in 72, so I don't have to go back, you know, long, long, long. And uh, I've got probably every team set, uh, certainly the old stuff. So putting together some binders with the Rangers team sets over the years would be cool. I also got from him a, a couple of the Nolan Ryan inserts. That Stadium Club card that on that Through the Years card is something I'm really looking for in a PSA 9 or so. And then, you know, you got these 70 years of tops, these old designs. And so, anyway, I, I just loved that card when I was a kid. Nolan Ryan and the Tucks. I mean, what a great card. And then he also had a couple of the Topps Holiday cards that I needed, including Mike Trout. So I'm still trying to finish that set. I think I need just a, a few cards for that. I'll probably just go onto Sport Lots or something and just pick those up. And then also from JT, he had bought a collection from somebody and was kind of, he's kind of now he's piecing it out. So I got a ton of these and I tell you, I'm constantly inspired by people on YouTube. I see stuff and I go, oh, that's awesome. I want that. And I, I watch Jeremy IPTTM all the time. He's a, he's a friend of mine and I love what he picks up. I love his collection. I love just first of all he's been to my house I mean he's a great guy and so anyway when people become your friends it, it changes the dynamic of how you watch YouTube for me especially if I've met somebody or you know really connect with somebody it just really changes I want to watch all their stuff and and it's because you know somebody on a much deeper level than just watching them on YouTube and so it, it adds an element of intimacy which is kind of a, maybe a weird word to use, but that's how I feel. I feel like I know this person. I want to support them and watch them because I, I just get them a little bit better. And so Jeremy, by the way, back to Jeremy, he has been showing all these big lots he's been buying of all these relic cards and people poo poo on relic cards all the time. I've been talking about it on golden age of cardboard. I, I dig the relic card. I, I think it's overdone, obviously. I mean, I think they just do too many of them and it's become a, not really a hit hit in a box. You're like, yeah, another relic card, especially when it's of somebody, you know, kind of a has been or never will be kind of player. You're like, yeah, but I, I like the relic card, especially for Hall of Famers and people. So I've been, I just, JT had a ton of them. 
And so I just picked up a bunch from him. Uh, here's the CC Sabathia. So I got a bunch of kind of future Hall of Famers just in anticipation. Believe it or not, he sold me a a Miggy that he had, and he did the blue tape thing, which is perfect. I'll I'll remove that later, but for now, most of, all of them, have, all the rest of them have blue tape on it. But here's from seventeen Ginter, nice Miggy relic. Here's another one from twenty fifteen Ginter, another Miggy relic. These are all things he obviously already had. These all-star game relics are some of my absolute favorite relic cards because it's something unique. It's not just our regular jersey. It's from the all-star game or, or the, you know, the practice day and home run derby and all that fun stuff. I love the all-star game in baseball. So I just, I've always really dug these uh, all-star jersey cards. And there's Max Scherzer. Then I got a, this is Eddie Matthews. I've never seen this card, this through the years. It looks like it's, a, is it Topps American Pie, I think? Um, but it even says authentic 1973 game worn uniform. I guess it specifies, and it says on the back. And I love, it actually is on the back. I love when the swatch goes through both sides of the card. That's kind of cool. So there you go, Eddie Matthews. I uh, got a couple of this guy. I, I can never pass up Adrian Beltre, Beltre relics uh, just because he's one of my favorite Rangers and certainly going to be a Hall of Famer. There's an 18 Ginter mini relic. A, I guess that's an NT, I think. National Treasures, number to 99. I actually probably already have that one, but <laughs> never bad to have another one. Uh, of course... He had this, 2020 Donruss, Yvonne Rodriguez. So of course, I had to buy that. I'm also a big fan of the Topps Anniversary Relics. Really of Hall of Famer. Not of all of them, but I really like the Hall of Famer ones. So this is from uh, 84. So this is what, from 19, I guess? Um, let me see what it says on the back. Yeah, 2019 Topps. So... I, I love these. I love 84 tops, and so this is just great nostalgia for me. So there's uh, Reggie Jackson. I love that. Got a Cal Ripken Jr. Tony Gwynn. And then this one's cool. This is the same set, but it's Carlton Fisk. But it's the, see the 150 down at the bottom? I think they're numbered to 150. Yeah, sure enough, look at that. It's all-star relics. I love it. So there's the Fisk. Now it's making me want to go finish off all the Hall of Famers that might be in that set. I've got four of them. Now I'm like, oh, let's finish it up. Uh, and the last relic that I got from JT is this awesome Tier 1 Legends. Uh, Mariano Rivera, number to 175. I think it's Tier 1. Is that right? Yep. Year one, 2019. Mo, interesting man. I did get two Hall of Fame autos because, again, with regular slab prices being what they are, I've been very just interested in finding other things. And so I, I looked and I was like, I don't have a ton of Jeff Bagwell autographs. So I just went and looked and like, what? Let me see what's out there. And I found this pretty cheap. Uh, Jeff Bagwell on card number to 100 out of tier one so I thought that was a good purchase and then this card has a great story so 76 tops Steve Carlton so I bought this card because I don't have any Steve Carlton uh, you know player error autographs and I wanted one and so I saw this and made a best offer it was accepted yada yada well that was February 1st. <laughs> it is March 10th. Uh, I got this card yesterday. So on March 9th. So it, and I had already filed a claim with eBay and was working, trying to work it out with the seller. And then I finally got notification on my informed delivery that it was going to be showing up. So I'm like, hey, wait, 
I don't want to necessarily, I, I, I really just wanted the card. I didn't want my money back. I wanted the card. And sure enough, this card finally came. I mean, it sat in a Lancaster, Pennsylvania, you know, based on the tracking uh, post office for literally weeks and weeks. And I'm just going, oh my gosh, this card's never going to show up. It's getting very frustrated because I really wanted it uh, just to have a Carlton. And I, I got a good price on this. So, I'm like, I mean, it was $25 or something like that. Uh, what's cool about it also is there's an autograph ticket in the back from the Park City 8th Annual Baseball Card Show. I don't know when that was. It says September 13th, but it doesn't... Oh, 1998. That's awesome. Uh, so, I would imagine that's when this person got this card signed. But, anyway, just took forever. And I'm just so glad that it came in. And, yeah, I guess patience pays off. And I hope you were patient in watching this entire video. If you did, thanks. I appreciate it. And I uh, hope you enjoyed it. Lots of different stuff. And no matter what's going on in the hobby, man, just enjoy it. Enjoy the hobby your way. And keep collecting.